There's one creature which, for many, except perhaps certain species of bird, are seen as a pest. The gardeners especially, they can be a cause of massive headache, but love them or hate them, the garden snail is one of the best known residents of our home turf. I've literally spent a minute rummaging around our strawberry pots here, and already I've found seven snail shells, which, on closer inspection, are actually very different. Now, it's the snail shell which can be used to identify snails as individual species, and straight away you can see that these three stand out from the others as being reasonably different. These are the shells of the classic garden snail, perhaps best identified by the four or five dark brown spiral bands here. Each band is then broken up again by various brown shades, giving a mottled appearance, aiding camouflage. I doubt I need to go into the detail of what these slow-paced mollusks eat. Newly planted seedlings, strawberries, or anything you generally want to protect from them will do. But how slow, or rather, how fast, can snails actually move? This is all down to the age and species of the snail. The oldest known Roman snail lived to the impressive age of 35 years old, but two to three years seems just as amazing, considering they have to avoid predators, parasites, diseases, and those nifty slug pellets. The fastest garden snail so far crawled 33 centimetres in two minutes during the 1995 World Snail Racing Championships, and as of yet, that speed is still to be broken. To see how snails move, you can smear some lettuce pulp on a window and watch its foot expand and contract in a wave-like motion. The slime produced helps reduce friction between the snail and the surface beneath it, making movement even easier. Sometimes as they're feeding, it's also possible to see their rudella, which is their tongue. This is our garden pond, and it's home to one of the snail's main predators. But to see that beast at its best, we're going to have to come back when it's dark. Right, so like the most of us, I don't own a heat sensitive or an infrared camera, but I do own one of these, a torch. And it's this thing that's going to help us find some frogs. The common frog has a varied diet, made up of insects, slugs, worms and snails. They come out of their watery habitat as it gets dark and spend the night feeding on the land. I find seeing these beady-eyed amphibians dotted across the lawn never fails to surprise me. <laughs> For me, I think the coolest thing about snails is their ability to survive the harsh weather conditions of the UK. During the colder winter months, they hibernate and change the composition of their haemolymph to prevent their blood from freezing. This allows the garden snail to survive temperatures down to minus five. Snails have a strong homing instinct, and however long it will take them, they'll be back. So the next time you consider chucking one over the garden hedge, or popping down some of those nasty slug pellets, consider the difficult world these remarkable creatures have to survive in. We may not know much about them, but I think they deserve a little bit more respect.